welcome to Scrapping with Sherry and page 83 in the sketchbook. Now, it is not my goal to confuse you, but I'm doing the same thing on this sketch that I did on a previous sketch. I had done page 81, the one with all the circles, and I liked it. I liked the colors, but I need a facing page for that, and I decided this page 83 sketch would work. Now, just as a reminder, here is the page 81 sketch. And I'm not going to be mimicking all those circles at all. I can just tell you that right now. What I am going to be taking across is the colors. I'm going to work with the same color scheme and try to get the same feel, but using totally different shapes on this particular page. So, you got that in mind. Let's move on. Now, I'm using the same background. I'm using this... Um, speckled white paper and you're not really going to be able to tell it's speckled when I get when I get it on there because it's going to be the background page. I'm using the stripe from the Seaside collection and then I'm going back with the blues and the reds that I used before. I did pull this border to go through the center just because I really like those shells and because we're going to see parts of the beach. I hesitate to say this will be a quick one because you know how I am sometimes but I don't think this one's going to be real hard. Our first thing, we've got our background paper. The inside paper inside that is going to be 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So I'm going to cut 11 and a half off one side and then off the bottom. I mean, I'm cutting a half off. I don't even know what I said. I'm cutting a half off to make this 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So that's going to be the inner background. And then there are two other background papers that are cut 11 by six and 11 by five. So to make this 11, I just need to take an inch off. And then I'm going to my five mark on this red. That leaves me some extra for matting down the road. And again on the blue, I need to make it 11 to start with. And then I need to pull out the arm and make this six inches. And we've got all of our background pages cut now. So let's go ahead and tape these together. So that part is out of the way. I think really probably the um, hardest part of this was just figuring out which papers to use because I did want it to coordinate with that other page that we did. Um, that did help because I knew I needed to use the stripes and the reds and the blues. But I don't think this is going to be a terribly hard page. Famous last words, right? And if I do this... I'm trying to decide which way I want these stripes running to see the bulk of them. Either way I do it, I'm going to miss some. So we're going to go this way because I want those at the top. Now, if you are doing your math, we cut one of these at 6 and one of these at 5, but we had already cut down, so... They should match up against each other just fine. Yep. My first thought was, oh my goodness, there's going to be space in between. I wasn't thinking about the fact that this is a third layer on this particular page. And because this is layered, you could actually gut the stripe underneath. You don't have to use all of that. It would be easy enough to just use bits and pieces and not use it all. So I want to look at what other elements on this sketch are important to me. I do know that this is going to go through the middle. And theirs goes side to side all the way out to the, to the outer background page. And I do like that. And let me just pull my pictures because you know my world. My world is not always going to lend itself to pictures the size that they call for. Now, they've got a four by four there, but they've got a really wide border. There's like a border with a border with a border above it. I'm going with one simple border on this. And I don't want to duplicate the pictures too much. 
So I'm not gonna use some of these that are very similar. There was one that I really loved and it's this right here. I just like all that grass showing in the foreground. Did I really have to do a whole nother page of this? No, not really. Um, I could have been done with just one, but because of the way my spacing was on my page, on my album, I really need this to be a two-pager. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and use both of those just to show some of that foreground. I, I'm looking at what I can cut down, y'all, if you're trying to figure out what I'm doing. I'm trying to see if I can cut these down enough to get them in here pretty easily. And then maybe do one more close up as the center of that. And we'll keep that one at the top. All right, that gives me some extras to go in my Lighthouse album. So now what I need to do is make these paper, these pictures work in the space I've got to work with. And part of what I'm gonna do here is crop off the top of this. I'm gonna keep our faces in there. And I showed this on the last video. I've probably shown it before, but I'm just cropping off the top of that and then flipping it over and adding it back on. And that gives me my white border back because you know I love the white borders. And I am gonna go ahead and tape this. I do like that in this sketch, there is a journaling area here with some little decorative elements there. And I am gonna do some journaling on this page. So that will be part of that. This I'm gonna slide right up there. This is already taking shape so quickly. I'm really pleased with that. This one I want to make about a four inch height. Now, I don't love that my border is not good at the bottom either. So, I'm gonna go right back to this photo and use it to make the top border and the bottom border to add back onto this photo. Oh, out of tape. I know it's probably confusing the way I keep doing all these borders. Um, with these pre-bordered pictures, but I hope you're getting the hang of what I do there. I still feel like it saves me a lot of time, a lot of money on paper. I'm just checking to see if there's any tape gunked in here to clean it out before I put my new one in. But I hope you are um, getting the hang of what I'm doing with all these pre-bordered photos. I've had several people ask me about doing them. Just as a reminder, I did these through Shutterfly. I do love Creative Memories developing, so don't think I'm bashing Creative Memories by any means. I love their developing. They just don't offer the white borders right now. I hope eventually they might, but I am not in the know on that, so don't say, oh, Sherry said white borders are coming. I didn't say that. And... We got that one. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. I'm still keeping that grassy stuff in the front because I just think that's pretty. This one I'm gonna cut really skinny, which I don't typically do, to slide right in the middle. And then I'm just gonna add some side border back onto that. Now look at that, y'all. I can just use that one piece that's wide and use it basically like a matting piece of paper. Yeah, there are words, there are numbers on there, but I can guarantee you if I wasn't telling you that, you wouldn't notice it when it's on my page. So we've got those three matted. And what I'm looking at here, I know I want that to cover the bottom of that photo. I'm looking at my side border and my bottom border to get this fairly even. I'm going to pull out that ruler. Did you know that was coming? Just to get this bottom edge even. 
And then let's put the one in the middle that we matted on the extra piece of picture. Now, if you can tell, this picture right here is just a little bit smaller, but I have a plan forming in my mind already to cover that up, so I think we're okay. I do want to add some foam squares to this shell border. And this shell border has nothing to do with the facing page. I didn't use any kind of shells on it, but because these pictures had the beach, I wanted to use this shell border. Does it tie into the other page? Not really, but all the other colors are tying it all together. So I'm not distraught about the fact that there's not a shell border on the facing page. Okay, now one thing I do want to pull across from my opposite page is um, a couple of circles. Now they've got circles here, they've got some here, and I wanna pull across a little more of those papers that I had used before. So, let's pull out our extra papers. Not a whole lot left. And this would actually be a good journaling box. So I think I'm gonna cut that down to make my journaling box. They show it as a three by two and a half. I'm gonna make mine just a little bit longer. And that will probably be plenty of journaling area for me. Didn't really feel like I needed a lot of space for that. We've got this paper that I really, really like. And instead of cutting it down to match a specific size or whatever, I'm just cutting what I've got of it. Now, I don't really want it to be the same size as my journaling box. So I'm gonna go in just a little bit more on that. And let me just look again. I think I'm going to leave that like that. And then I'm going to pull back in some of these stripes. And I really, really, really like these stripes right here. I like those bolder stripes at the bottom. I'm trying to decide exactly how I'm going to do this. I'm not going to throw away those pieces. I can guarantee that. But they've made a little bit longer piece here. And that's kind of what I want to do. I want to make something a little bit longer to go behind there. These pinks are not my favorite, so I'm just going to chop them off. I'd probably do better to flip that so it doesn't look like I was trying to line that up here. Okay, and if you look, they've got one piece of paper, but then they've also got a banner inside there. And I can do that, but I'm gonna tape these down. Make sure I get all of my spacing good. So you can see how I took all the basic elements of this sketch and kept them very similar. It's not exact, but very similar. My pictures are the big thing, and I did them differently, but in a way that really worked for my photos. And that's my main goal. Now, I've got these two little strips of the blue and the red, and I think what I would like to do with that is make these into two little banners. And I'm just cutting kind of in the middle and snipping from corner to center. If you've got that three-in-one banner punch, it's easy to do that, do these little banners with that. Or you don't have it handy and you just wanna use your scissors, that's okay too. And then I'm just gonna chop these off. And we'll stick those right in here. That banner makes me feel very nautical. I like that. And I like the double banners on that because it brings in all my colors again. All right. 
So I do want to bring back in a little bit of circle. And I think I'm going to do that using this three in one punch. And I think we're going to have to go with this because I've about wiped out all my others. I didn't punch that all the way through. This one is one you kind of have to give it a little elbow grease to get it to punch all the way through. And so let's go back and pull our red with our bigger circle punch. And we'll just add a touch more red up here. Well, I'm wiping out these scraps, y'all. And then I can stick that and that on there. Now, is that going to work? I really wanted something here. That wouldn't work, so we need a blue one. Let's go find the blue scraps. That's a pretty big sheet of blue. Can't do that. That just goes against my grain. Kind of like that. I like that. Let me get my silicone mat and my repositionable tape. I could stick that one in the middle. these cute little stripes on this one. And I am going to foam square this. I did foam square on my seashells, but I want that to kind of stand up too. Let me just see what I've got in the way of some stickers to go with that. I did add a lighthouse sticker on the opposite side, so I don't really want a lighthouse on this side. Oh, this is cute. Shella Bright Good Times. That matches what I've got going on with the shells. Oh, we've got the little crab. He's cute, but you know what? I don't like the turquoise look on that. but I could add a shell on here. Got a couple of little birds on here. Maybe I'll use one of those right there. And go back with the shell. I'm gonna foam square that. We can add that right up there or right there. Yeah, I like that. Then we can add our celebrate good times over here. This is a sticker. So I'm gonna put a couple of pretty large foam squares on that to keep it from laying down on that page. And then we'll stick this. I'm looking at my sketch. I want to see what they've done. They did some down here, some here, one over here. I really think I like this right up there. Or do we like it right there? Yeah, that's kind of good when it's flowing in with the other shells. That is cutting down on some of my journaling room, but I can make that work. All right, so pretty quick. That's page 83 in the sketchbook. Now remember it matches page 81 that we did previously a couple of videos ago. And when I say match, they're not exact, but look at the elements that we drew across. We drew all the colors across. We brought in a couple of the circles to go along with that. I think this is a pretty layout. Um, not matchy-matchy at all, but now we've done page 83 in our sketchbook. So until I see you next time, happy scrapping. Mm -hmm.